Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslag talking to you about Reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I want to talk about what is a PhD in healthcare administration and where do you actually get one? So if you don't know me, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and I created this whole Reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There are so many people that helped me out to get through graduate school and to get a PhD that I wanted to pay the favor forward as much as I, I possibly can, right? Um, so with that, you know, what is a PhD in healthcare administration? So generally, I think that there is kind of two different types, two sort of generic types. One is going to be doing a PhD in, in public healthcare, uh, in public administration. And another one is going to be doing a PhD in a business school. And I know the one in the business school uh, a little bit better, but, you know, there's definitely overlap in terms of the stuff, the research that we're going to be doing. And, you know, it really doesn't matter in terms of the research that you're going to be doing. It's the key is, is where do you want to teach and, and what do you want to do going forward, right? When you're making this decision. So if you want to teach in a business school, then do a PhD at a business school. If you want to do, uh, if you want to teach in a school of, um, you know, public administration or something along those lines, then do a PhD in that area. You're going to be reading the same literature. We kind of go back and forth and cite that each other and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't necessarily matter with that. So what you want to look for, what's more important is when you're looking for a PhD in um, healthcare administration, what's more important is you're looking for people that are interested in the area in the thing that you're looking for, right? So, and often what ends up happening is the people that are doing really cool, interesting research in that particular area are not going to be in with that sort of healthcare kind of area. And I'll get into that and the reason why in a bit. Um, but I just wanted to point that out and just keep following along. So um, what's important is you just want to find the thing that you're interested in in healthcare. So whether it's innovation, um, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it is a type of firm, so hospitals, for example, you want to find the people that are doing research in that particular area. Um, <laughs> the other thing that you want to be doing is uh, looking for people that are interesting and, and kind of nice and kind of stuff like that, right? Like that's a key thing to be looking for when you are looking for um, doing research and doing a PhD because you're going to be working very closely with those those people. Um, okay, so in, in my field, I want to point out, so I, I do study stuff within the healthcare industry, but it's kind of unique and different. Um, I study the medical history. I got a hair there. <laughs> I study stuff within the um, medical device industry. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I kind of fit in a weird area. So I'm not necessarily, I'm not hospitals and doctors, which is what a lot of people do. And I'm not pharma um, and biotech, which is another group of people that do. So a few years ago, we got together, all the people that were interested in medical devices. And I think there was a grand total of like 20 people that I know of, or we, you know, we kind of had sort of a little short meeting at one of our national international conferences and we got together and it was just such, such a small group um that that was interested in that so the stuff i do i'm kind of yeah, i'm kind of healthcare but not really in terms of what other other people are doing and a lot more people take it a lot more seriously than i do i'll tell you that um Okay, so what schools are doing this kind of stuff, and this is not all inclusive in any sort of way in terms of the schools that you should be looking for. This is just people that, or schools that I, you know, I, I bumped into and they kind of have like a cluster of people at these particular schools and they just, you know, keep showing up in, in the academic literature and, uh, um, you know, just having an influence. So, um, you know, Harvard and the sort of Boston area schools, Brand, 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 Brandy, um, I don't know, is that private school? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, Boston University, MIT, if you go to those schools, you're going to find people that are doing healthcare stuff. And the reason is, is there is kind of a healthcare cluster in that area. Um, Boston is well known for pharma and, and medical devices and healthcare um, and there's, you know, people going back and forth in terms of going to the different hospitals that are there and the different, um, you know, medical schools and stuff like that. So they have a cluster. Let's just say that. And look at those schools. There's some really great, interesting people. Um, you know, Amy Emmonson is, is definitely one of them at Harvard that is doing some great stuff. She's been doing it for years now, I think. And Gary Pisano as well. They've been doing it for like 
30 years, I think, at this moment that they've been doing um, research in this area. And so they're really pretty well known and, and they continue to push that forward. So you want to check out people that are doing that kind of stuff. Um, and as well as any of those schools, they have great people. And a lot of their PhD students will go to those um, kind of surrounding areas because what ends up happening, if you don't know this, um, it, it, this is how clusters typically work anyways. So academic clusters. So if you don't know this, what ends up happening is that there'll be somebody that's doing research in a particular area and they'll get PhD students and the PhD student will do something. They'll grow roots in that community. Right. And so they go to Boston, they grow roots, um, you know, they have a couple of kids, they meet somebody and all that kind of stuff. And then they don't want to leave that particular area. So then sorry, my voice is squeaky. I got a cold. Um, and then they they um, end up staying in that particular area. So there's lots of people that are kind of doing that kind of stuff in that area. And that's how a cluster forms gradually over time. Um, that's generally what happens, right? And that's how it's sort of industry clusters work and things like that. So anyways, do you want to check out the different schools that are doing that kind of stuff? They're, they're all cross-pollinating each other and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's great research that they're doing in that area. Um, another one that is doing some really great stuff is um, UPenn. So Wharton has a healthcare, has a separate healthcare school that is kind of, it's really unique in, in Wharton has a lot of unique kind of programs like this that are kind of related to the business school, but kind of not. Um, so they have a separate sort of group that they're doing healthcare stuff and, and they are doing some fantastic stuff. There's great people that are there right now and they continue to grow. I think there's probably 20 to 30 people that are in that kind of area. They're all doing research. They're all pretty intensive um, in terms of the research that they're doing. So I'd highly recommend that you check out that particular or, or at Wharton as well. Um, you know, Duke has great uh, roots. And the good thing with Duke and um, Wharton and Harvard and stuff is they have these relationships with business schools that are close by or with um, the, the healthcare organizations and, uh, you know, the different medical schools that are close by so you can go back and forth and get interview data and stuff like that so which are really important going forward um and then university of toronto actually is developing a really great kind of program and they continue to do um do some great things and they continue to do work in that area um you know will mitchell um uh, brian golden you know that there's there's a lot of people that are doing really great stuff uh, at the uh, university of toronto uh, University of Western Ontario, there's people that are interested in as well at Stanford University. That, by the way, I've mentioned that, but that's where I did my PhD. Uh, Stanford University has some great stuff. And then there's there's people all over the world that are doing interesting research. Um, and I'd highly recommend that you check them out and not really just focus on these particular schools. I just mentioned them because they're kind of that's where a lot of research is coming out of in these in, in this kind of area. So you want to check those out and um, but they're going to be very competitive to get into. And, I, you know, that's it's it's kind of tricky. Um, and of course, my institution, I'm not going to mention what that is because I don't want to teach your decision in any sort of way. But uh, you could check that out as well. So but anyways, um, what I want you to think about is not necessarily the institution, these these are kind of clusters, right? And what you want to look for is not the institution or the particular, you know, that they're doing healthcare stuff. What you want to look for is that they're doing good, good research. And that's a more, more important thing. And normally what people do is they use the healthcare context as a context. And then you do research based on, you know, mother disciplines and stuff. So you might end up doing stuff on economics, right? And, and applying it within the healthcare industry. So a lot of schools and a lot of people um, that are all around the world are doing stuff like that. And they wouldn't call themselves specifically a healthcare person, but what they're going to call themselves is a, a specialist in XYZ theory. And so you're going to want to look at those people and then apply that kind of theory or the thing that you're doing in that particular context. In the context is healthcare. And it's different and I know for a lot of you that are coming from, you know, industry, you're going to be sort of arguing and jumping at the bit with me. 
But really, that's how academia is going to be sort of oriented. And you want to look at that and you want to find people that are doing interesting, great research um, that are good to re work with. They're going to be collegial. They're going to be nice, all that kind of stuff. And, and that is going to be much more important than actually finding somebody that is doing sort of healthcare specifically in that particular area. So if you want to do stuff on politics, you find somebody that's doing politics and you then you look at, um, you know, applying that to the healthcare industry. And I, hopefully that makes sense, right? And that's how you actually get through. And, and, and the reason is that that's how the academic journals are set up. There's, there's not a lot of specific industry specific journals that are out there. And those ones are not going to be as sort of highly rated as the ones that are doing, um, you know, that, that are theory related. And so you want to do this stuff in theory and then you apply it in a healthcare context. So that's what I would do. I would look for people that are doing interesting stuff that are really, you know, kind of nice and um, open and things like that. I, with being a advisor and being just a really great person to work with. And then after that, you can apply in the your interest in that particular field. So that's what I would personally do. So I'm gonna, I would I would get you to identify people that are you know, going to be good um, professors to work with, right? And, and that's the key thing and that you're gonna be able to do research with in a particular area and then because you have great knowledge in, in healthcare, for example, you can apply some of that stuff that you've understood in healthcare into that context. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And that's really what I would personally do. And that's what most people do when they go into, um, you know, when they do PhD in a, in a business school, it's like, we're never going to do research on businesses and applying it. You know, if we did research on say Target, for example, it's never going to get published. Um, what we have to do is find kind of a generalized theory about how maybe it is uh, large multinational corporations actually operate. And it's the same thing in the healthcare industry. And that's that's what you want to do. You don't want to do research on hospitals. Um, you want to do research on, you know, maybe it is how um, not-for-profits in are, are how do they compare compared to private organizations right so you it, it's different it's a different feel but um, that's really what you're trying to do and even that is probably too context specific or too um, you know not theory driven enough but anyways I hope you get my point and that's really what I would personally do I would look for people that are doing great research that are um, you know nice people to work with that um, you know that they they hold a lot of promise in terms of who they're um, who they are and that they're doing great research um, at the end of the day so hopefully this makes sense if it does give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to the YouTube channel all right um, take care and uh, have a wonderful day bye